Hello, and welcome to Chemistry with Mr. Olson. Today we're going to do some solution, I don't know what to call it, solution stoichiometry. And uh, we're, using, we're doing experiment A in our green uh, packet. So, in class we worked out what all these concentrations, if you're having difficulty with that, um, a key thing to remember, well, actually, review your diagram on page 133 of our composition book. This reviews uh, how the concentration of H plus varies with acids, neutral, and base, and also the concentration of OH minus. They're in balance in a neutral solution. In acidic solutions, H plus predominates, and in basic solutions, the OH minus predominates and the actual concentrations vary in lockstep because the product of the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus is a constant 10 to the minus 14 which is KW water's dissociation constant. All right so we've worked to this point we've figured out the moles uh, in question two. Let's do a similar calculation in uh, question three. In order to make 500 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution, how many grams of solid sodium hydroxide must be dissolved in water? We know that molarity equals moles over liters, so we need to figure out the moles. The moles equals uh, liters times molarity equals. Now we're going to figure out the moles and then convert from grams to moles using the molar mass. So liters times molarity equals the, uh, let's see, how many liters? Well, 500 milliliters is 0 0.5 liters times 0 0.1 molar. That's 0 0.1 moles per liters. I like writing it that way so that we see liters cancel liters, and we're left with moles. That would be equal 0 0.05 moles of uh, NaOH. NaOH, that's how much we need dissolved in water to make 500 mils, to 500 mils of 0.1 molar. So we need that many moles of NaOH, how many grams, though? Well, let's convert this out of moles of NaOH into grams of NaOH. Building our conversion factor, one mole is how many grams? It is Na 23.0, oxygen 16.0, hydrogen 1.0. So. 23.0 plus 16.0 plus 1.0 equals 40.0 grams per mole is our molar mass of NaOH. Writing that here, 40.0 grams per mole. Moles cancels moles. And my goodness, 0 0.05 times 40, 0 0.1 times 20, 1 times 2 looks like 2 grams. How interesting. I don't know what our sig figs are, but came out exactly through 2, so 2.0 grams of NaOH. There we go. All right. Now, if the two solutions are combined, this is combining the NaOH, we'll be fancy and say, hey, this is aqueous, plus the so, uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, aqueous, reacts to form. Now, the way to analyze this is think of the ions. Here we have Na+. Plus. Uh, I want to draw them in. We've got Na+, plus, we've got OH-, minus, and with sulfuric acid, we've got uh, H+, plus and SO4, minus 2. Of course, we have a couple of H pluses. So, 
Well, we see a very uh, familiar product. The product to any neutralization reaction is H2O. So H2O, and that is, of course, liquid, plus what remains? Well, we have Na ions and SO4. To balance them, we need Na2SO4. That is the formula, and that will be aqueous. It'll actually still be dissolved in solution, so... Um, all right, write the balance chemical equation. Two H's, two H's. Ah, two Na's over here. So we're going to need to put a coefficient here of two. And I think it's balanced now. Wonderful. If the reaction described above produces a neutral solution where the hydrogen ions, the H plus ions, and the OH minus ions are in balance, then the moles of H plus equals the moles of OH minus, and the pH is 7 in a neutral solution. Okay, question 6. If you use 20 milliliters of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide, how many moles of sulfuric acid would you need for a neutral solution? Hmm, okay. <clears throat> Let's start by using stoichiometry. So we want to get, we've, we've sort of determined the moles here. We've got the, the volume and the molarity. So let's figure out uh, molarity equals moles per liter. Moles equals uh, liters times molarity equals our liters. Move that decimal point three places. One, two, three. So our liters uh, are 0 0.02 liters, and our molarity is 0 0.1 moles per liter. So we can cancel liters, and we will get 0 0.002 moles. Now we must be very clear what we're talking about. This was all about the sodium hydroxide, NaOH. And now the stoichiometry Really, to, to answer the question, how many moles of sulfuric acid we need to form a neutral solution, well, that would be, that would use this ratio in our balanced chemical equation. For every two moles of NaOH, we only need one mole of H2SO4 because it produces two H pluses in solution. It is a diprotic acid, donates two protons. So, I'm going to change colors just so that... Uh, the mole mole ratio stands out. So we get out of moles of NaOH, and we get into moles of sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and we see two moles of NaOH react with one mole of H2SO4, cancel our units, and we get the answer, 0.02 divided by 2 is 0 0.001 mole of sulfuric acid, H2SO4. And there is that answer. Okay, next. If you combine 50 grams of sodium hydroxide solution with 50 grams of sulfuric acid solution, the temperature of the mixture rises from 20 degrees to 21.3 degrees, Calculate the joules of energy released by this reaction. Assume the solutions have the same specific heat as water. All right. <clears throat> so this is a Q equals MC delta T problem. And we're given the mass. Let's substitute. 50 plus 50, we come up with 100 grams. And... The uh, delta T, they calculate the joules of energy, the assumes, ah, the specific heat. What is specific heat? Yes, really, I should be focusing on my substitutions. M is here. What is C? Same specific heat of water as water. Looking that on, up on our reference sheet. Uh, they ask for it in joules, so the most convenient thing would be to use joules, 4.18. 4.18 joules per gram degrees C, 
is our specific heat, and our delta T is uh, T final, 21.3 degrees C minus T initial, 20.0 degrees C. And that is all our data. Uh, let's cancel some units. These degrees C's will cancel that degree C. This gram will cancel that gram. We're left with joules, which makes us happy because we want joules. We're calculating Q. And if we do this calculation, I think I may have written it down somewhere, but I lost it. Where did I put it? Ah, yes, here. 543.4 joules. And we could round that to fewer sig figs, but uh, whatever. All right, now, this reaction is, well, it gave off heat. It heated up the water, so it must be exothermic. And the sign on the enthalpy change, delta H, sign on delta H would be negative. Negative. Meaning that the energy has been released. Released. It's a product. Released. Complete the potential energy diagram for this reaction. Well, we have the reactants, and we go over the activation energy, and we come down, and there is our uh, products. And heat is released, and that, that distance there is our delta H. That's our delta H. And this, this distance here, that is our activation energy for the forward reaction, for the forward reaction. Okay, and that is our solution stoichiometry for today. I hope that is helpful to you. Uh, remember, we've got uh, lots of useful equations. Where did they go? Well, when talking about molarity, Molarity equals moles per liter. And uh, this is a little confusing because moles and liters and molarity are units, but we also, in this equation, use them as variables. It's a little sloppy, but um, that's the way we do it. And here, Q equals MC delta T. Nice, clean equation. These variables are variables, and we use units like joules, grams, joules per gram degree C, or calories per gram degree C. And uh, delta T, degrees C. And I should have mentioned Q can be in joules or calories, or there are, of course, many other units of heat energy. So, hope that helps, and have a beautiful evening and weekend. Ta-ta.